This video is brought to you by the Corsair Obsidian 350D Micro ATX case. Exceptional expansion and cooling flexibility for compact, high-performance PCs. Visit Corsair.com Obsidian to learn more. Welcome to a Graphics Card Dinner Theater with your host, Linus the Tech Tips Guy. This video is all about the graphics card that looks exactly like the other graphics cards. This is the GeForce GTX 770 from NVIDIA, and as you may or may not have noticed, based on looking at it or based on what I just said, it looks pretty much identical to the GTX Titan and the GTX 780. However, that is pretty much where the similarities end in terms of performance, because this graphics card is based on the GK104 GPU, the same GPU that the GTX 670 and 680 were based on. Now hold on, before you go, Linus, hold on, stop. That means that it's a rebadge. It is sort of a rebadge, but it is an enhanced rebadge. It is an updated graphics card. So what they've done is they've taken a full-fledged GK104 GPU, just like you find on the GTX 680, paired that with seven gigabit per second, so seven gigahertz GDDR5 memory, so faster memory, and then they've added some new technology. GPU Boost 2.0, the updated cooler, as you've already seen, as well as their new fan profile that makes the card quieter while running cool due to GPU Boost 2. Now, that's all fine and good, but you kind of go, well, Linus, it looks really expensive. How much does it cost? Uh, actually, less than a GTX 680 used to. This is coming in to fill the gap that GTX 670 is leaving behind because that card will be going away to be replaced by the GTX 770. Without further ado, let's get into the performance. We're using our standard test bench. You can check out the specs on the slide that's in front of me right now. We're using the latest beta drivers from both the red team and the green team, as well as EVGA Precision for all of our GeForce overclocking and MSI Afterburner for all of our Radeon overclocking. The reason for that is we found that Precision, when we started our testing at least, had better support for GPU core offsets. Now, speaking of GPU core offsets, this graphics card uses GPU Boost 2, which means that overclocking is a little bit different. If you check out my GTX Titan overclocking guide, you will know how to overclock the GTX 770. We run all of our cards overclocked, and I think what you're going to see is we had a bit of an anomaly that I believe will be smoothed out very, very quickly, but what you're going to see in our performance testing is that the 770 really didn't separate itself from the GTX 680. In fact, it fell behind in some of our tests, which was confusing until we looked into how our GPU Boost 2 was behaving. And it looks like on this particular card, it wasn't boosting up very high. Remember guys, GPU Boost is a variable thing. One card may boost up more than another, and the spec is based on typical GPU Boost. So it looks like once overclocked, our 680 had a very favorable core clock, whereas our 770 was not boosting up as much or as consistently in spite of the fact that they were being run in a room with the same temperatures. So your mileage may vary here, but without further ado, let's get into the games. Metro Last Light is our first game up and you can tell where the performance comes from in this game. It comes from memory bandwidth. The top two cards are GTX Titan and GTX 780 and they are so far ahead of everything else, about 30% faster than anything else that is even trying to run this game. Next, you've got the GTX 770. Remember that seven gigahertz GDDR5, that's making a difference. In spite of its 256-bit memory bus, it still pulls ahead by an ever so small edge against the 7970 and 7950 from AMD. And then if you look at the 680, 670, and 660 Ti, they really fall behind because they're not using the same advanced memory that you find on the 770. In Tomb Raider, we once again see GTX Titan and GTX 780 just run away with it. Then we see a clustering of cards that's all pretty much within margin of error. Our 680s in there, our 770s in there, our 7970s in there, our 7950s in there, and only the 670 and the 660 Ti really fall behind in this particular benchmark. In Crisis 3, we're going to see that same pattern again with the Titan, the 780, and then... Pfft, 
everything else except the 660 Ti where we really see it fall behind compared to the other cards. This is uh, becoming a bit of a pattern here and uh, it's probably gonna continue. In Bioshock Infinite, same story guys. So we see the GTX Titan and GTX 780 really run away with this one with a very tight clustering of pretty much everything else behind them with the 660 Ti bringing up the rear again due to its more cut down design compared to the 670s and, and 680 and 770, which are all very similar specs at this point in time with the 770 having the best spec, but once again, having that anomaly that we've observed with our particular card running GPU boost. Once again in Far Cry 3, we see the Titan and the GTX 780 really run away with it and everything else is very, very tightly packed within about a 10% spread after that with the GTX 660 Ti really falling away. Bearing in mind, of course, that a 660 Ti is significantly less expensive than most of the other cards that are in that, sort of, that top tier. I'm gonna combine this last graph with my conclusion because I think this graph pretty much sums it up. GTX Titan and GTX 780 are here. Everything else is here. So the GTX 770 is a very evolutionary step forward in terms of performance. Yes, it performs better than a 670. Yes, it's less expensive than a 680. It looks better. It has a more updated feature set. NVIDIA's rolled out GeForce Experience, which updates your drivers for you, as well as gives you recommendations for how to run your games. These are all fantastic things that are good. It has an illuminated GeForce GTX logo on the top, which I can't get over and I love makes your system look awesome. It makes you feel good about the purchase. It feels solid, you know, metal, aluminum crafted thing. Like it's really, really nice. However, the GTX 780 is the one that really looks like the compelling value to me because even though it's extremely expensive, we're talking about, you know, well over $500 graphics card, that's the one where you're getting nearly that Titan performance, which is the cream of the crop when it comes to a single GPU. Nothing touches it. I mean, you've seen from these graphs, nothing's even close except the GTX 780, and the GTX 780 costs significantly less than a GTX Titan. So would I go for the GTX 770 or would I pony up for a GTX 780? I think I would personally probably save my pennies and go for the 780. I wouldn't jump all the way up to the Titan because you can see for that extra money you're spending, you're not getting that much more of a performance increase, but that's that sweet spot right there that the 780 hits. Then if I didn't get a 780, I might run around and look for maybe a hot deal on a 670 or a 660 Ti that's quite overclockable or something along those lines if I didn't want to spend that much and save myself a few bucks. So the 770 will come into its own, I think, once those older cards are cleared out because there's always clearance hot deals when a new generation of cards comes in. And I think that pretty much wraps it up. Thank you for checking out my 1080p performance review of the GTX 770. Don't forget to check out my unboxing as well as my 1440p performance review because I think you guys will be surprised at how that extra memory bandwidth helps this card when you're running at higher resolutions. Don't forget to subscribe to Linus Tech Tips for more unboxings, reviews, and other computer videos.